Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss how to call a PostgreSQL stored procedure from a .NET application. So let us quickly start our video. So let me open a notepad and write down all the steps that we are going to perform in this video. So first of all, first step we are going to create a stored procedure. First step, we are creating it, creating a table. Sorry, and the, as a first step, create a table in PostgreSQL, and we are going to create a table with the name test employee. And the second step, we are going to create a stored procedure in PostgreSQL. And the third step, <clears throat> we will create a .NET application. I'm going to create a .NET Forms application. And as a fourth step, we are going to install a NuGet package. With the name NPG SQL. This is the NuGet package which contain all the commands to run the PostgreSQL database commands and we will write the code to invoke the stored procedure and insert data into the postgresql table so let us quickly start our <coughs> first step <coughs> and excuse me so i have already the create table script with me ready for this so this is the create table script. Uh, we are going to create a table with the name test employee. These are all the columns that the table is going to contain. EMP name, EMP DPT, EMP salary, EMP DOB, which represents nothing but the name, department, salary, and date of birth. And this is the ID column. This ID column is auto-generated. So we need to provide syntax like this in PostgreSQL to automatically generate the value for this identity column so we are creating a constraint with the name id underscore p key which represents the primary key this is the primary key constraint which is going which we are going to create on this id column so let me copy this script and execute in the postgresql <clears throat> so to connect to a postgresql we need to have this pg admin tool if you don't have that pg admin tool you can install it from the you can download from the internet and you can install it so as I have already installed that PG admin tool, it is showing me here. So once we open the PG admin tool, it looks like this. So once we connect to a database, I have already connected to one database. So uh, these are, it shows like this is the procedures, tables, functions, all the objects in this database. So let me open the new query editor window. This is the query editor window where we can write the query and execute queries. So let me copy that create table script here and I'm clicking this button to execute the script. Once I click this button, a table with the name test employee is going to get created. So before create, let me check the table here. Select star from test employee. <clears throat> I'm running this query. Now we should get other because the relation test employee does not exist because we have not yet created. So let me <clears throat> create this table first. So let me select this script that which I'm going to execute now. So I have selected this to create table script and I'm executing. I'm clicking on execute. Now the create table query returns successfully. The table has been created. Now when we select this, when we run this command, <clears throat> now it, we should not get that error and we should able to see this table. So this is the table and as we have not inserted any records yet, it is showing blank. Now let us create a stored procedure that create stored procedure script also ready with me. So this is the create stored procedure script. Uh, this is the syntax create or replace procedure. I am going to create a <coughs> excuse me stored procedure with name sp insert sp underscore insert underscore employee. And these are all the parameters that we are going to send to the stored procedure. EMP name, EMP DPT, EMP salary, EMP DOB 
and I am suffixing, I am prefixing the parameters with p underscore, which represents the parameter. So p underscore, <clears throat> and this is the insert statement that we are going to execute in this stored processor. <clears throat> and we are inserting values into these columns. And these are all the values that are being sent to the stored processor as parameters. So if you observe, uh, we are not sending value for the ID column because the ID column is auto generated. Once we insert a record into this table, the value for the ID is automatically generated. So we don't need to pass value for the ID column. So that's why we ignore that column ID column. Uh, let me copy this create stored processor script and execute in the query editor window in the PostgreSQL. Now let us go to the PG admin tool and we will take the new query editor window. <coughs> we will copy that create processor script and I'm going to execute this script. Now create processor query returned successfully, which means that this stored processor got created successfully. Now our next step is we need to create a forms application in .NET. I have already created a forms application in .NET. If you see, this is the application. And if you see that for design, I have also completed the design for this application. So this is the employee name where user can enter the employee name and this is the department user can select this is a combo box where user can select the department and this is the salary and this is the date of birth and this is the date time control and I kept a button with the <coughs> uh, with the caption save once user clicks on the save button we will invoke the stored processor and we will insert data into the PostgreSQL table uh, we <coughs> kept the connection string here in the connection strings parameter with the name PostgreSQL and we need to provide the connection string details here as I am hiding the actual connection string. You need to provide your own connection string details here, the server, database, user ID, password. <clears throat> Once you provide the actual connection string details, the code is going to use this connection string and invoke the stored processor and insert data into the table, right? And let me double click on this button to, uh, I have also written the, the code to insert the data into the table to invoke the stored processor. Before that, we need to install the NuGet package. Let me show how to install that NuGet package. So right click on this uh, project solution file. And here you have the option called manage NuGet packages. <clears throat> Once you click on this, we need to install a NuGet package with name NPG SQL. See, as I have already installed it, it is showing in the green tick mark because as I have already installed it, if you don't install, you just need to click on the browse tab and search for NPG SQL. Once you search for it, it will display it. This is the NuGet package. So if you see the description, NPG SQL is open source .NET provider for PostgreSQL. So to <clears throat> work with PostgreSQL to write code, to invoke the stored processors or to invoke the database commands of the PostgreSQL. So this is the NuGet package that we should install, right? So you can click on it and you can just here, as I have already installed, it is showing an install button. So you, otherwise it will show install. So you need to click on this and you need to install that NuGet package. Once we install that NuGet package and this is the button click event if you see. <clears throat> so we are reading the connection, connection string from the app.config file. And once we read the connection string, we are using this <clears throat> NPG SQL connection object. So once we install that NuGet package, we, we are able to uh, use these commands, NPG SQL com connection, NPG SQL command, etc. So, and to use these commands, you need to import the namespace this npg sql so two steps first you need to install the nuget package npg sql and the second you need to include this namespace into the class in which we are we want to invoke the np postgresql commands so this is the npg connection object so we are initializing the npg connection object using this using statement <clears throat> the advantage of this using statement is we don't need to close the connection explicitly. Once this code get executed, this connection will automatically get closed. So 
always we need to use this using statement that is advantage in invoking the connection object using this using statement so npg sql connection we are creating an instance of this npg sql connection object and we are passing this connection string that we read from the uh, app.config <clears throat> and this is the command npg sql command if you observe we are creating npg sql command cmd equal to new npg sql command and this in this way we need to invoke the stored processor so we need to use this call and this is the processor name <clears throat> as you remember excuse me sorry this is the processor that we have written sp underscore insert underscore employee so we are calling this name sp underscore insert underscore employee and the parameters we need to pass like this colon and p underscore <clears throat> the parameter name so if you observe <coughs> extremely sorry my <clears throat> throat pain so here if you observe p underscore emp name p underscore dept so you need to pass these parameters with colon so this is the syntax we need to call pass the parameters and after that comma this is the connection object so in this way we, we need to define this command object and the command type dot text this is important even though this is the stored processor we should not give it as processor it we will get error so we should provide the command type as text right this is the step that you need to remember because in generally for sql command object we if we when we call the processor we will give it command type dot processor but here in postgres sql it, it it is going to treat as text so that is why even though this is a processor we are calling it will be treated as text that's why we need to provide the command type as text here and cmd dot parameters dot add with value we are passing values to all the parameters employee name dpt is the same parameters names that we defined here employee name dpt salary these are the parameters and the value for these parameters so if you observe this is these are two both are strings and this is decimal and this is the timestamp so that is why they both are strings and this is decimal and this parameter type with data type we took as date time and the values values we are passing from the controls text name value from the txt name control and d department value from this is the combo box from the combo box selected item and the salary we are converting to decimal and we are passing the salary to this parameter and uh, this is the date time control and its value is <clears throat> date time value so we are passing it and npg sql connection we, we are opening the connection here using this and we are executing the command using the cmd dot execute non query once this command gets executed a record gets inserted into the table and as we are using this using statement we don't need to explicitly close this connection it will get automatically closed the connection right so let us execute it by debugging this code let me pu put a breakpoint here let me if before running it uh, let me click on the start <clears throat> now we'll get a form so before that let us check the data in the table so we don't have any data in the table so let us give the values employee name some raju department i'm going to select as finance department salary 2000 and date of birth let me select <coughs> 2010 january 1st right let me click on the save button now we are fetching the connection connection string details here here we get the connection string details in this uh, variable and using this connection string details we are creating the connection object npg sql and we are invoking the command object by passing these values and we are passing the command type as text and the values we are sending raju and the <coughs> department has selected finance and the salary and the date of birth i selected january 1st 2010 so execute non query it has opened the connection now and we are calling cmd.execute non query now that has completed successfully and if you see 
now when we run this see now the data has come we have we can see the record with these values let us insert another record so let me close this and let me rerun this so let us put a message box uh, per user for confirmation that the record was inserted successfully so after this message box dot show employee data inserted successfully now let us <clears throat> rerun this and insert a second record into the table now this time i am going to give the values as john and the department i am selecting as hr salary 1000 and the date of birth i am selecting december 27th 2022 i am clicking on save <clears throat> now using that postgres commands the data postgresql commands the data will get inserted now if you see employee data inserted successfully generally in the click of ok button we need to clear down all the values of these controls so i am clicking on ok now if you see this table now we can see the second record now see john hr and the thousand dollars is the salary and this is the date of birth that we have selected in this way we can invoke the postgres sql stored procedure from a dotnet application using the nuget package and pg sql and in the next video i will explain how to invoke a function that is written in postgres sql from a dotnet application thank you friends thank you so much for listening my video very patiently thank you so much